truck. I think we're talking about trucks, like <laughs> we're about light trucks. vehicles, pickup trucks, SUVs, even the tiny little SUVs like um, Honda the, HRV. The Honda HRV, which a cross over, a crossover is considered yeah. a truck. All right, so the story is trucks are crushing it. Yes. Doing extremely well. What's All the, the car makers have crushed it, right? So, right, but is it going to continue? What's the guidance from the car makers? Uh, well, the guidance from Honda, for example, is that they will continue to crush it as far as their <laughs> trucks are concerned. They release a brand new pilot that hits the dealer's lots, uh, I think, well, we're in June, so this month. Uh, and the HRV did very well last month. So, yeah, I mean, all signs are pointing to trucks continuing <laughs> to sell well in America, as they have f since trucks have been invented, right? I mean, we always buy yeah. more trucks than cars, unless right. there's a recession or a spike in fuel prices. We actually are trying to talk about big transport trucks. I realize this has now descended into a segment about monster trucks uh, but we want to talk about the big trucking industry because of the environmental protection agency trying to get more fuel efficient uh, mileage standards matt this is hard agree this is probably more your area of expertise uh, i believe what the average fuel economy for a big truck is five miles five to gallon. six miles i was talking to my uh, uncle who's actually a trucker okay uh, and hey. we, were, we were on the phone this morning and, and talking to one of his friends who's also a, a long-haul trucker and they were saying you know roughly six miles per gallon and the interesting thing they said is that some of the older trucks are still doing six miles per gallon some of the newer trucks are still still doing six miles per gallon so they're kind of skeptical at being able to get nine miles per gallon out of a big class eight sleeper cab which is basically what the epa is calling for but by 2027 which is like a hundred years from now right i mean keep in mind that uh, what, one of the best selling luxury the be no the best selling luxury car in california is an all electric car i mean that sounded like a jetson's fantasy 12 years ago and now it's real so. yeah but they're not going to sell an all electric 18 wheeler okay, so well you know what one of elon musk's uh, partners or one of the original founders of tesla from whom elon musk bought the business plan is uh, electrifying big rigs right now. So there, there are big rigs being electrified and, of course, natural gas. I mean, talk to Boone Pickens about this, right? It's a great way to drive big trucks, like especially UPS trucks yeah. or FedEx delivery vans. Okay, so the question, though, is how difficult is it going to be for the auto companies to shift gears? You know, you've in done a lot of reporting. Years. In the next, fine, but you've done a lot of reporting, for example, at Ford about how difficult it has been for them to switch the assembly line over to the lighter body aluminum trucks. We're now talking about a, changing what's going on inside the body of the car. That's got to be a lot harder, Matt. Hard agree. How expensive is it going to be for the car makers to get the fuel economy up to nine miles a gallon? Actually, you know, it's funny. We would think in most cases, fuel, like big truck makers, are against this. Actually, it's the owner operators and the buyers oh. who are against this. The truck makers love this idea because it allows they them to sell, sell a more, yeah, new fleet of more expensive trucks. So we're looking maybe 18000 for a Class 8 truck, which is, you know, you're talking about a vehicle that's one hundred and thirty dollars to $140,000 already. That is a big expense. And a lot of these people who are driving these trucks are buying them themselves. Uh, and so they're having to then finance all of this extra cost. But if, you're, if you look at who's excited about this, Daimler, who which owns Freightliner, Detroit Diesel, and, and truck maker, super on board with it. Volvo trucks slightly less on board with it because they haven't been involved from the beginning. Cummins, one of the biggest diesel uh, engine makers in the country, also kind of super excited about this because they see profits, they see money. This is a market yeah. where people are very reluctant to spend more money, and now they're going to have to because the government is going to make them. So better fuel efficiency standards, good news for humanity, good news for the environment. But if the average price per truck is up $18,000, is that going to trickle down to consumers? Does this mean consumer prices are going I've up? I've always thought the best way to ship uh, goods en masse would be blimps. It seems to make, to me, a lot better <laughs> sense. There was actually a company called Cargo Lifter. Are you trying Lifter to get banned from the show? In Berlin. <laughs> like, no, uh, uh, back, back, uh, back when I was reporting on this in Germany in the, uh, in the early part of the last decade, and they can move... Uh, move goods not only more fuel with more fuel efficiency but also much faster because the average truck also moves goods at like eight miles an hour i mean it's a surprisingly low uh figure as far as distance traveled per hour for the big trucking industry so and of course warren buffett would rather see uh, <laughs> what is, trains what does your on. uncle think about all this uh, you know, to the truckers that I've spoken with, my uncle and otherwise, the issue is that when we have these things, you're like, oh, the price gets passed down to the consumer. But what happened when fuel prices went up uh, a few years ago, the, the price wasn't passed on to the consumer. It was passed yeah. on to the trucker with fuel sur surcharges. So, again, I think we're going to see a big problem for truckers uh, and everyone else, the consumer, the truck maker, everyone else is probably going to do it. Well, and we have a big problem for truckers, right? I mean, yeah. first of all, it's a very dangerous job. And a lot of uh, accidents, I mean, Bloomberg News did a great investigative report on how many dangerous accidents uh, happen and, and how much that figure has increased because truckers fall asleep. Obviously, when those uh, costs get passed on to truckers, they feel the need to drive more hours to make more money and they don't stop to sleep as much as they should. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's one of the higher paid jobs if you look at the employment reports and also one of the most dangerous. All right.